Hello, Dr. Joe here of the drjoe.com and the 2020 forum.com. So as you can see here, I am surrounded by lots of food and for good reason. Now, with so much information floating around the internet, on blogs, on videos on YouTube and on podcasts, it's very easy to get lost in all of that wealth of information and also to get confused. But more importantly, it's also very easy to forget about the basics because people keep telling you about the advanced rules. But in this video, I want us to go back to the basics because the basics work and also because the basics concern the first and most important rule of fat loss. Now, this video is not about people who are going to get rock hard abs or six pack abs in two weeks but it is for people who are looking to lose fat in the medium to long term. It's about sustainable fat loss. Now, when you hear this rule, you might dismiss it thinking it's very simple, uh, it, shouldn't, it wouldn't work, but it does work. Indeed, uh, people who have attained sustainable fat loss in the medium to long term always follow this rule so it actually makes sense for you to pay attention and to watch the rest of the videos because uh, is the reason i've got these practical examples here to show you what this rule is about now so what is this rule well uh before i talk about this rule i want to talk about why this rule is important and it concerns the foods we eat now when you process a food you change the structure of that food. You change the cell structure of that food. And when it comes to plants, for instance, when you process plants, then what happens is you change the plant cell structure and by so doing, you alter the plant's glycemic index. So that food becomes easily digestible because it's been altered, becomes easily digestible, which means uh, when you consume it, it's likely to spike your blood sugar. And if it spikes your blood sugar, it's going to spike your insulin levels. And high insulin levels will lead to fat storage. Insulin is a fat storage hormone, uh, which means it's harder for you to lose the weight. And uh, it also means in the medium to long term, uh, with so much fat storage, uh, that will lead to metabolic problems further down the line. So that's why you know following this rule is very, very important. So what is this rule? Well, you guessed it. I've already hinted on it uh, a, a short while ago. Well, it's about consuming whole foods. Regardless of whatever diet you adopt, majority of the foods you eat should come from whole foods. Now, you might say whole foods. Well, I've heard about whole foods, but here's the thing. Whole foods mean different thing to different people. You know, when I did my tongue in cheek video, about wheat bakes and baked beans. Uh, when I went to hospital to the hospital the next day, uh, people were stopping me on the corridor. Even doctors, they were asking me, saying, "Well, we didn't know wheat bakes was, you know, heavily processed." Well, it is uh, because the way it is marketed, uh, people think that a food like wheat bakes is a whole food. Well, it isn't, and that's the reason I've got all of these examples here for you. So uh, let's get started with all of these examples. Now, before we get started, let me just define what Whole Foods is uh, so that uh, you can put it into context. Well, Whole Food is a food that is unaltered. It is in its natural state. And that's one aspect of the definition of Whole Foods. The next aspect of the definition is that nothing bad has been added to that food, okay? And usually we're talking about salt, sugar, and fat being added to the food. So nothing bad has been added. And the third aspect of the definition of Whole Food is that nothing good has been stripped away from that food, okay? So uh, the food is unaltered, Nothing bad has been added and nothing good has been taken away from the food. When you have that, that constitutes whole food. So uh, with that in mind, let's get started. So what I have here, I've got three lanes of foods here, okay? So you got lane one, okay? Lane one uh, constitute whole foods. Lane two constitute minimally processed version of the whole food on lane one 
and lane 3 is the heavily processed version of the whole food on lane 1. So lane 1 whole food, lane 2 uh, minimally processed and lane 3 heavily processed. Okay, so let's start with classic example. So this is rice, okay? This is brown rice. This is brown basmati rice. This is whole food because it contains the entire grain. Now, in lane two for rice, we've got white rice, okay? So you got white rice here. So this is minimally processed version of the brown rice. In lane three, we've got rice krispies, okay? Uh, this is heavily processed version of the rice. And talking about being heavily processed, here is another version we got here, rice pudding, okay? This is heavily processed. It's packed with sugar, just like the Rice Krispies, okay? So this is one example, okay? Now, next food is corn. So this is corn, is in lane one, okay? Corn is in lane one. In lane two, we've got popcorn, which is minimally processed version of the corn. And in lane three, in the highly processed lane, we've got cornflakes. Okay, cornflakes heavily processed. Here's a rule of thumb anything that is Kellogg's is heavily processed. Okay, so this is Kellogg's cornflakes. Now, next food we have is what we've got here. This is lentils. Okay, this is these are lentils. Then, lane one, this is whole food in the the minimally processed lane for lentils, we've got canned lentils. Okay, it's minimally processed. And then in lane three for lentils, here we've got here, these are lentil chips. You can see the lentil chips in the pack. Okay, you can get that from Costco. Now, next in line for whole foods is cacao. Okay. Now, there's a little bit of cheating involved here. This may pass as minimally processed uh, because by definition, the whole food will be the cocoa beans. Uh, but, you know, not very many people will consume cocoa beans as they are. So the cacao powder will constitute our whole food here. Next in the minimally processed lane for uh, cacao is this one here. This is the green and black organic cocoa. This is cocoa powder, okay? so. This is cacao powder, and this is cocoa powder, minimally processed. In the heavily processed lane for cocoa is chocolate. This is hot chocolate, okay? Hot chocolate powder. So that's for the food. Uh, next we have chickpeas. So go chickpeas. This is whole food, okay? Whole food, chickpeas. Next. In, in lane two for chickpeas is canned chickpeas. Okay, so this is minimally processed. In lane three for chickpeas, we've got baked beans. Okay, baked beans, heavily processed. Next, we have here, uh, we've got red skin uh, peanuts. These are red skin peanuts, okay, whole foods. In lane two for peanuts, we've got salted peanuts. Okay, salted peanuts. So that's lane two, minimally processed. And in lane three, we've got chili coated peanuts. Okay, these are chili coated peanuts, heavily processed. Okay, so next food to, come, to talk about, uh, one of my favorites, oats. Uh, so these are steel cut oats, steel cut oats. This is whole food, still cut oats. In lane two for oats, we've got rolled oats. These are the most popular, rolled oats. Okay, these are the ones that uh, you tend to see in shops. Uh, still cut oats, lots of people don't know about still cut oats, but that's the whole food. In lane three for heavily processed, we've got uh, oats so simple, these oats so simple, these versions. This one is a uh, golden syrup version. Uh, these are best avoided, to be honest. You know, the golden syrup full of sugar. Uh, so, also simple is the heavily processed version of the oatmeal there. So, uh, like I said, in lane one, we got 
the whole foods in lane two we got the minimally processed and in lane three we've got uh, the heavily processed version of the whole foods in lane one now uh, sometimes you don't have the middle lane uh, sometimes you go straight from the whole foods to the uh, heavily processed so this is potato okay whole food uh, and of course uh, you got uh, chips here or crisps whatever you want to call them depending on what country you live in this is heavily processed okay so these are the classic examples of whole foods and the minimally processed version of the whole foods and the heavily processed version of those foods now here's the rule for you to have sustainable fat loss uh, you want to stick to lane one okay you want to stick to lane one these are the whole foods but life is not always so simple uh, there are times when you may need to progress to lane two okay so lane two the minimally processed are also allowed but if you have the whole foods version available that is what you should be eating but if it's not available or for convenience you may move on to lane two where you've got the minimally processed version of the whole food so for instance you may have white rice instead of brown rice but by all means always go for brown rice or uh, this is the one i'm guilty of uh, i will always uh, for the most part tend to go for the canned uh, uh, chickpeas or or beans uh, so uh, or the canned lentils uh, because sometimes i just cannot be bothered to uh, the cook the lentils but the minimally processed versions are okay but for the most part you want to stick to the whole foods as much as possible now lane three is what you want to uh, really stay away from uh, because these are the foods with the highly altered glycemic index and these are the ones that are going to spike you these are the ones that are going to make the fat loss a lot more difficult for you so you want to as much as possible avoid lane three uh, but occasionally if you feel like it you may go for some of the foods in on lane three but uh, it should constitute probably five percent of your nutrition okay the foods on lane three here so uh, this is uh, the uh, the rule concerning uh, nutrition and how you can nourish your body this is for you know nutrition for optimal health uh, this is how you can nourish your body for optimal health and uh, also to lose the fat in the medium to long term i can tell you that if you're eating the foods on lane one all the time and sometimes uh, the foods on lane two you're not going to have problems with fat loss again ever trust me so uh hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did uh, please give the video a thumbs up uh, please like the video and also please uh, share this video with your friends family and colleagues if you've got any questions any comments regarding this video go ahead leave them down below which of these lanes of food you normally eat the most uh, do let me know whether you tend to eat more of the ones on lane one or the ones in lane two or you are guilty of lane three uh, the heavily processed foods i want to know please let me know uh, your comments down below uh, i think that's about it uh, for this video uh, until next time well this is dr joe signing out so let's have some peanuts then this will make mm, we've done some nice work here so mm. whole foods great <laughs>